64 over 16. All you have to do is cancel the 6s. You'll get 4 over 1, which is 4. This happens to be the correct answer. And this is just my first example of every math teacher's nightmare, invalid math operations that, in spite of it all, produce the correct result. How about 9 over 2 minus 25 over 10? Kind of an annoying expression to deal with. But everybody knows when you're subtracting two fractions, all you need to do is subtract the numerators and subtract the denominators. We'll get minus 16 over minus 8, which is the correct answer, 2. How about this expression? Now, a difference of squares would simplify this correctly, but a fun error is just canceling one set of x's on the top and the bottom, one set of y's on the top and the bottom to get x minus y over a negative symbol. I mean, you didn't cancel that after all. And then, of course, two negatives make a positive, and the answer is x plus y, which is correct. If you're not so great at multiplication, 3 times 9 might give you trouble. Maybe make it more complicated, 9 is the square root of 81 after all, and 3 times root 81 is 3 root 81. This is all true so far. What gets better is that this radical is turned into a long division problem, 3 divided into 81, which of course is actually 27 if you do the long division. Say you wanted to give an example of two irrational numbers whose sum is irrational. How about root 2 and root 3? Two irrational numbers whose sum is indeed irrational. How would you show this? Well, if you tried to use a calculator and rounded a bit, root 2 would round to 1.41, root 3 would round to 1.73, and so 1.41 plus 1.73 is 3.14, which rounds from pi, and is irrational. Say you want to differentiate x to the x power. Typically you would use something like logarithmic differentiation to handle this. And although it doesn't apply, say you wanted to use the good old power rule for derivatives. Just multiply by the power and subtract 1. But another rule pops into your head, namely that the derivative of a to the x is a to the x natural log a. So according to this, the answer should be x to the x natural log x. Maybe if you're not sure, we'll just add the 2 and get partial credit. Except that this solution turns out to be completely correct. How about this integral? Just use a u substitution and remember your natural logarithm rules. This should work out okay. But we can try a different way by splitting up this fraction and integrating like this. We remember the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log x. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 then should be natural log of 1, and even combining them incorrectly with properties of logarithms to log of x plus 1 does in fact give us the correct answer. Take sine x equals 0. When you have a product of two terms equaling 0, either the first is 0 or the second is 0. So x must be 0. Since a function can't just be equal to 0, sine equals 0 doesn't make sense, so x is 0, which would happen to be correct on a restricted interval. Here's an admittedly annoying trig expression. You'd probably have to use a bunch of trig identities or maybe just a calculator. Fortunately, if you have an incorrect idea about how we combine these trig functions, you'll get to the right answer. Just add the arguments in the numerator and the denominator, it's cosine squared of 90 over cosine squared of 90, and you might as well just cancel the 90 over the 90 while you're at it. Cosine squared of nothing over cosine squared of nothing, well anything over itself has to be 1. And it turns out to be the correct answer. If n is 2 over 15, and x is arc cosine of 3 fifths, then find sine x over n. 
Of course, all you need to do is cancel the n's and say si of x, which is 6, which is 6, and happens to be the correct answer. Say you want to take the derivative of 1 over x. No need to use the power rule or the quotient rule. Just cancel the d over the d. You're left with 1 over x times 1 over x and a fraction bar. Combine the x's to make x squared in the denominator and use the fraction bar as a negative. You have your answer. Log of 1 plus 2 plus 3 by linearity should be log of 1 plus log of 2 plus log of 3. Now there's no property of logarithm that does this, but this fact does turn out to be true in this case. If you enjoy math fallacies like this, you're really going to enjoy this one. Click the video on the screen to check it out. I'll see you in that one.